January 1st, 1943 was warm and sunny and the loading went smoothly. The gear was all stowed and the last of the 1st Marine Division troops were going aboard. It was only then that their condition became apparent. Men who had fought for four months in the foulest climate in the Pacific and had been shelled, bombed, or shot at by snipers almost constantly between battles seemed to collapse at the same moment. Scores were unable to climb the nets into the ships and had to be carried aboard. They had shocked expressions with glazed, sunken eyes. For weeks, most of them would be patients with malaria, dysentery, assorted fevers, and fungus infections. Virtually every man in the division had malaria by now. Puller said, It isn't so much that they're sick or even worn out. It's the reaction from the discovery that they're finally leaving this damn place, and yet a lot of them grew into men here. The division's dead were 1,242, and 2,655 had been wounded. Sickness was near total. No one could yet grasp the importance of the island fighting on the day of loading out. The longest of the Pacific Island campaigns had been fought and the pattern of future victories had been set. The Japanese had paid a higher price here than they would pay again and had thrown all their disposal, ships, planes, men, and machines. More than 50,000 men had been lost on the island or on the ships trying to reach it. In Japan, it was already known as the island of death. For more than a year, Radio Tokyo was to call the 1st Marine Division the Guadalcanal Butchers.